this review of the last year is going to be a tale of two halves, okay? It's a mix of good and of bad, and let me get into it. So it is the long-awaited three-year update of Oakley. I have been putting off this video for, what, what month is it? It's November, and we got him end of September three years ago. So two months I've been putting off doing this. And like I say, it's because it's a bit, it's a, it's a bit of tale of two halves. If you are subscribed, you've probably heard me talk about this already, but I will go into it in this video. First up I'm going to talk about his temperament and how he is now compared to the first two years. It has been easier. It has been getting, it has been getting progressively easier and easier. Thank God. <laughs> if you are new, I have struggled with this little boy. I have, I've struggled. He has not been an easy puppy, but it is getting slowly easier. Should I get him in? Should we get, go get Apple? Good job. I feel like everybody wants to see him. Here he is with his little jumper on because it's, we live in the Northeast and it's very cool now, isn't it? Hey baby. So this is Oakley, if you are new. He is a working Cocker Spaniel and he's three. His birthday is July 31st, so he's three and three months now. I have been documenting him since we brought him home. There are a lot of updates. If you want to go back and see the struggle I was talking about, I did document it, so I'll leave the link to, oh. I'll leave the link to the playlist above because we've got vlogs of me crying over you, don't we? Because you're such a difficult baby. You are. I'm not going to kiss you because I've got lip gloss on. But he is finally calming down. <laughs> Four new people. Just whilst we are talking about how it's been difficult and his temperament. Working working Cocker Spaniels are not an easy dog and I feel like the, the classic thing for your first dog is like get a Cocker Spaniel. They are easy first dogs. I would like to argue that point right now. <laughs> He's a scent dog, so it's hard to get him off anything if he sniffs things. He's an anxious dog, and not because he's been trained that way, but just because he's anxious. I've tried to train it out of him, I'm still trying, it's hard, he's anxious. And getting him to walk on a lead is very, very difficult. Cocker Spaniels, don't be fooled, are not an easy dog. So when he was a puppy, he was incredibly active, <laughs> very, very energetic, very hard to calm him down. Crate training was very, very difficult because he wanted to be on the go all the time. This last year, he has started to calm down. It's a slow process, but I definitely feel like this year is the year that we can be like, yeah, no, he is calming down. I'm just making it so your butt's not up halfway up the city. He's still not a settled dog. He's still not cuddly. He's not settled, which is one of the main issues that we have with him still. As you've probably can tell during this section, he doesn't just come and cuddle and sit. He still cannot do that. He wants to be up and about. He can't find himself comfy unless he's by himself. Case in point. So he's still not a cuddly dog. Don't get me wrong, he'll come for a cuddle and he'll have a cuddle for a few minutes, but then he will take himself off and be by himself. Even when he gets like these nighttime cuddles before he goes in his crate, because he's still crate trained overnight, mainly because he loves it. <laughs> by the point that I'm about to make. Our routine is normally he gets took out by Jack, then he has a cuddle with Jack, he has a cuddle with me, then he goes back to a cuddle with Jack, and then he takes himself off to his crate. We don't normally have to tell him to go to bed, he will just go to bed. He, do, he will not stick about. His likes and stuff have changed, but that's gonna come at the point where I'm, t what I'm talking about later. Right, I thought I would go through the problems first, gets them out of the way. I have had a history with people not liking my Oakley content and saying that I'm not a very good dog mom and saying I'm far too negative about him. So if you are one of those people and you can't deal with people talking negatively about their dog, this video might not be for you. I am gonna get the bad points out of the way first and then go on to the good points, but please don't believe me here, I will delete them. Right, lead walking. I've mainly just realized over the last year and listened to people in being that just cockers aren't good on a lead. And I know, I know dog trainers are like, any dog can be trained to walk on a lead. And that is true. I am training him and when I am consistently training him, he's better. I'm quite proud in the fact that I feel like I've gotten further than other cocker owners, but that doesn't mean it's not fracking difficult because he does not like being walked on a lead. And I do feel like that's evident because a lot of cocker owners and Springer owners do just let their dog off lead because they can't deal with it. I've had conversations with my friends about this and they found that the most dogs they have problems with of off lead dogs are cockers. And I think that that comes from owners getting sick of their cockers pulling on leads. So just letting them off the lead when they're not ready. 
and it is difficult i would never say i understand that because you should not be letting your dog off lead if it doesn't have recall but they are freaking difficult so you have to put a lot of work in there is no just like ah well eventually they'll come in by your side if you keep stopping nope he wants to pull i have stopped training it as much because i have basically just stopped caring as much i've been taking him out on his gentle lead a lot more i basically just got to a point where i felt like this isn't working f it that's not to say i'm not doing it at all it's just if we are working on lead walking without his gentle lead that's definitely more of a training session and i don't have it in my head that he's going to be able to walk on lead for like a prolonged period of time without his gentle line. It's more of like a training tool. If we want to walk with him on lead for a, like for longer than, I don't know, 10 meters, he has to go on his gentle lead. So that's on me. That's not on him. I just, I got out of the routine of it. So he forgot what he was meant to do. And yeah, he is still on his long line. I know this is controversial with Spaniels, but he is still on his long line. His long line is something stupid, <laughs> like... 25 meters like it is long line as long he can freaking run on it and i think i've decided within these last like probably within the last year i don't think i ever want to let him off as long lead i think me and jack my partner had always had in mind that we would eventually get him off lead when he's re when his recall was like but since we have started taking oakley more places like the woods or just more hikes we have realized Oakley <laughs> loves to go to the edge of cliffs and lean over. I am petrified of him being off his lead and me not being able to yank him back away from an edge. I am so scared of just something happening to him. I'm not so scared about the recall thing anymore because I think like his recall is really, really good. But I am more scared of if he just falls down something and that's it, he's gone. Like when I say he goes to the edge, I mean he goes to the edge and goes to go over and we have to like be like, <laughs> no. And I know that's the whole point in recall, but if we're even slightly a second too late, he's over and I'm not losing my dog like that. I saw the, I don't know if people saw it, but I feel like it was big in the dog community, but Apollo who went missing in the Lake District, I, he, that dog always is in my mind in the fact that they were just walking in the Lake District and then they've never found their dog again. That terrifies me. So I am not, I'm not, I'm not risking that with him. So I don't think we're ever going to let him off his long line. When, sticking on the topic of like leads, when we are walking him in the woods and stuff, because I know people hate long lines in terms of like, they're just a pain in the ass, and I completely agree. Because they're such a pain in the ass, and we love walking in wooded areas, we decided to change him. And I was talking about this last year, so I'm not going to talk about it too in depth. I will link last year's video above. We have been having him on a harness and a flexi lead. That's the only re that's the only time we use the flexi lead. We do not use the flexi lead on his collar and we do not use it for walking on a heel, except for when maybe like we're passing someone in the woods. But it's just, it's so much easier than the long line and it doesn't like traits along the floor it doesn't pick stuff up off the floor he doesn't get caught it's just so much easier i think we're cons going to consider buying a longer one so he can have a little bit more rain because the one we have currently i think it's only like five meters maybe that maybe not even that and i'd like for him to be able to get away from us a bit more than that but it's been so much easier if you're a long line user which i would recommend for everyone i would recommend trying a flexi lead and a harness when you're in like dirty areas if you get what I mean like where you can pick up branches with the long line and gets tracked in and trips along and it's just a pain in the bum. Next main problem is a separation anxiety which is where it's going to become the tale of two halves. Right I'm going to go from the last update until about two three months ago maybe three four months ago. He was basically doing excellent he was so good we basically could leave him for however long we wanted we maxed it out at four hours because that's just how long our max is for leaving him alone we didn't like it longer than that and he had zero problems it was incredible he still had the issues of like wanting to be with us around the house and being like upset if he couldn't get to us kind of thing not crying but just being on edge and not playing with his toys or feeling completely relaxed when we weren't here but he wasn't crying he wasn't howling he wasn't doing anything until about three four months ago and it all changed you know what it's not three or four months ago it's about two months ago we went away to the lakes as i have 
vlogged about so i'll leave that above as well so he was at my grandparents which is where he stays if we go out for longer than four hours or if we go away he goes to my grandparents they have three dogs and they also look after my sister's dog a lot so they have three cocker spaniels and one darshant so he was there for three days then he came home after we got back for like two days absolutely fine not a problem excuse me i can't fit here we left him i can't remember why but we left him and he was absolutely fine then we had a birthday party on the saturday so we left him there again so we didn't have to rush back and then after that saturday he's just became like a different dog we have no idea what's happened i asked my grandparents and they said nothing was different at all but he basically when we whenever we leave the house because it's basically it's been consistent now since that happened so since september when we leave the house he's howling again he isn't as much crying but he's howling for the first week or so when that happened he was howling the entire time now it's more of like after he's finished his food and his kong slash lick mat whichever we leave, we leave him with he'll howl for like five ten minutes and then stop and then he's fine but it's still not ideal he also started if you're a subscriber you'll know he'll He's also started jumping on the furniture, which Oakley has never, ever, ever done. We are a family that he's allowed up on the furniture when he's allowed, but he has to be allowed to come up and he's not allowed up all the time because he still has the issue with wetting himself. Speaking of which, I'm going to um, get him off before he falls asleep. Can you get off? So when Oakley falls asleep, when he's up on the furniture, he wheezes. Not purposefully because it's only happening when he's like deep in sleep and it's only happening when he's on the furniture so we have no idea what's happening with it. I've asked the vet about it, vet about it. the vet says it's behavioural but <laughs> I don't know how you teach them not to do that when they're asleep. So that's one of the main reasons he's not allowed up on the furniture but he when we were leaving him he started jumping on the furniture when we weren't here and just settling up there which isn't okay because he wheezes and also it's not okay because that's not what he's allowed to do and he's never ever in his three years of life done that so that changed he started becoming way more anxious he barks at everything now he's always been a bit of a barky dog since we moved into this house because there's a lot more sounds than what the house we brought him home in was but now he barks at everything if he hears a car door he barks if he hears the gate he barks if he hears someone walking past he barks and this change just happened so quickly and we were literally like what what has gone on and we still can't figure out what happened and it was just so annoying because he was doing so well like he was doing so freaking well like i say we could leave him for like four hours and he'd be absolutely fine another thing that he's done is he's completely lost his food motivation okay used to be so food oriented like so food oriented if you've watched any of the updates before you'll know that i've said he absolutely adored snuffle it was his favorite thing to do in the world so we have so many enrichment activities surrounding snuffle but he's became so off any food that we have to motivate him to eat his meals now. So training is a lot harder because sometimes he just won't take treats and he's not a toy dog either so he can't like use the toy as the reward. We can't do nearly any enrichment anymore because he's not interested. He won't go, he won't touch his snuffle mat at all. So that's really difficult because he's not getting anywhere near as, as much enrichment as I would like. And like I say, it was just super, it's super frustrating because he was doing so well. We have asked a behaviourist to get involved. I'm going to come into that into a different section. His other biggest issue is jealousy. And I think this is interwoven with the separation anxiety. But he is so incredibly jealous. It's a problem. He's not aggressive jealous. He's loud jealous. So within the house, if me and Jack are play fighting, because we do that a lot. It's just we, we love messing about with each other. He hates us doing that. He will come and jump on us. He'll bark at us. He will start. He has like a flatbed in the kitchen. He will like bite that and flip it up. And then if we were at my grandparents, my grandparents have the setup where the dogs are in the kitchen and they have a baby, baby, baby gate on the kitchen with the door open. If we are in the living room away from him, he is a nightmare. He will jump. He will scream. He will he won't bark, but he will cry at the fact that he isn't with us. Another, the other biggest thing that frustrates me is basically if we interact with other people, he can't stand that. Or even if I'm talking to other things that aren't him, he can't stand it. So I have two baby sisters and when we play with them in the garden, like if we are running about, playing tag, whatever, he 
hates it he will run at me he will bark at me he will jump at me like and he'll do it with the girls as well which obviously isn't great one of them doesn't care but one of them gets a bit scared which is completely fair enough there's a dog barking and jumping at them another example is um we have a cat on the street that i absolutely adore i love him and if he hears me talking to the cat outside because i'll be like oh, have you been misty and stuff like that he will go off it in here like i will hear him from the street in here barking, yelling, crying, because he can hear me talking in a cutesy voice to something else. Like I say, I think that's all interwoven with the separation anxiety thing. I think all of it stems from jealousy. Like when we leave him, he's like very much like, why aren't I with you? And I have asked a behavioral a behaviorist for help with this. So about two months ago, so when they started all accumulating and getting really bad, we found one, we emailed her. I gave her a really in-depth email because I just wanted to know the whole situation. And she basically came back and said she'll only work with us if we do a vet referral in a nice way. That sounds like she didn't, but she did say it in a nice way. She was really grateful for the in-depth email because she was saying that a lot of separation anxieties actually stem from pain. And she wants to make sure that Oakley's not in pain before she starts working on him behaviorally, which is completely fair enough. I kind of want that anyway, because <laughs> I want the vet to look at him properly because our vet hasn't been great in the past. But because it's a vet referral, it means it's a lot more expensive. I think the vet referral itself is gonna cost 200 quid and then that isn't including any sessions afterwards. And when this was happening was when Jack was in the Philippines and then when we came back, we found out we had to get a new car. So everything just came and it was like, we can't afford to do this right now. So we will get around to it. It's just, we're gonna have to get a vet, refer vet referral. It's expensive and then we're gonna have to pay for this training. So we will get around to it, we 100% We'll go with her. I like that she wants the vet referral, but it's just, it's not an option financially at the minute. Right, on to the last problem. The biggest, the biggest problem, and it's not even him, and the biggest problem is other dog owners. I have been so vocal about this, so I'm so sorry if I am repeating myself and you're bored of me complaining about this, but it is such a problem that I have became such a recluse with Oakley over the last year and I hate it. It is not fair on Oakley at all. But I am actually terrified to go out with Oakley because of other dogs and other dog owners. <laughs> it got to a point where it felt like I was getting into an argument with someone every single month because I didn't want dogs running up to him. I don't want it. I don't want it at all. I know a lot of dog owners don't want it, but they let it happen anyway. But I do not want it. I don't want him near another dog that could potentially attack him because, I don't know, a sound went wrong. Like, I don't, I really don't want him in any danger whatsoever. And I don't want him playing with a dog that I don't know. And it's just made me not want to take him anywhere and that's not what I wanted from having a dog. And it's not even his fault, which is the worst bit about it, it's other people. But I literally can't take people yelling at me anymore and not listening to me when I ask people to get their dogs. We've probably been taking him out like somewhere new or somewhere different once a month. And every month it happens so we were out with him on Sunday and two Akita dogs came and stood up to him and then the owner didn't even chase after the dogs the owner stayed on the path because we were off the path anyway because we try and stay off the path if we can because we don't want to be near other dog owners and the owner stayed on the path didn't even stop walking when I was like can you get your dogs can you two Akita like dogs came and stood and stared him out whilst Jack took Oakley away and I had to like stand my ground to get these Akitas to not go after Oakley and this guy had a baby on his back like what's he gonna do if his dogs get into a fight he's not gonna be able to break it up he's got a freaking baby on his back that was just this Sunday on Oakley's birthday he had a German Shepherd come after him and I couldn't do anything because it's a freaking German Shepherd and the woman genuinely said that I was the problem when she had a German Shepherd off lead with no recall and was growling at my dog inches away from him and this isn't this isn't a great situation anyway but i am autistic communication is so freaking hard for me so every time this happens i take it so personally and i am a mess after i cry i'm fine within the moment <laughs> i will argue with them and tell them to put their dog on a lead but as soon as it's over Oakley's not okay, I'm not okay, I'm balling, Jack just has to deal with it. It's so incredibly shit. And that has genuinely been the hardest thing 
throughout the entire three years. Even worse than the hate that I got on YouTube at the beginning because that I can just ignore it. Whereas this, I can't ignore it because it happens every freaking time. There are so many irresponsible dog owners out here and it is hell. Like I am just, I'm so sick of feeling like I can't live my life with my dog because of other owners. Like this weekend, Ellie wants to go to the beach with Tazzy and Norkley and I'm just like, I don't know if I can do the beach because I've had so many instances at the beach where the dog just comes bounding up to Oakley and I'm absolutely sick of it. I'm so sick of it and I literally feel like I can't leave the house. And I know that's not fair on Oakley and I am trying to work on it so please don't come and being like, it's not fair for your dog, I get that. But I'm freaking terrified to go anywhere with him. So that's the hot, that's been the hardest thing. Anyway, let's move on about something not the problems. Somebody asked about his food that Oakley was on. So Oakley is on the Purina, Purina Pro Plan dry food. He is currently on the salmon one. We rotated a bit when he started getting bored of his food. It doesn't seem to be helping, but he loves salmon, so we've kept him on the salmon. He's on that because I want to use kibble because sometimes we hand feed. And this is the one that the vet recommended in terms of the quality of the food that's in it. The pro plan is a vet grade kibble, so that means that the first ingredient never ever changes. Whereas in like pet store foods, so things like bait air and stuff like that, the first ingredient can sometimes change depending on how cheap the ingredients are at that moment in time. And the second ingredient can also change, whereas in these ones, the first ingredient is always going to be the meat that is in the food. I also like that it comes vet recommended because it means that I know that it is very good for him. He is, someone also asked about his favourite toys. I'm going to see if he'll let me take it off him because he's currently chewing one. So these types of ones are his favourite. So he has the gorilla. I think this one was from Pets at Home and I think this one was from My Pet HQ, which is a local store to us. That might have been... That might have been pet at home, I'm not entirely sure. It's the same kind of thing. He basic. this one's better than the gorilla because the gorilla's stuffed. His favorite ones are unstuffed toys. So if you can see, there's no stuffing in this apart from a squeaker. So, oh, it's not broken. There you go, okay. His favorite ones are unstuffed ones. He loves them. His favorite like chews are Benabones and Yaks. We've started, um, we introduced Yaks to him this year as well and he loves Yaks. He gets bored of them very, very easy, so he literally has it for like five minutes and then we take it off him. He's still not a fan of peanut butter. He likes bananas and he loves apples. But his favourite toys are unstuffed ones. And I love that you can buy unstuffed ones now because it used to be that we just took the stuffing out of them. But you can buy them now and he absolutely loves them. He's grown into fetch as well in this past year which he was never bothered about. He really likes fetch now and plays, like Jack takes him to the field every day and plays fetch with him. He doesn't like bringing it back as much, but he loves chasing after a ball, which was a completely new thing this year. We've tried using different things to balls because obviously there's a lot of risk with balls and hitting them and getting stuck. We do use the big ones, so he, he is safe. But we tried using other stuff, so I felt it was even more safe. So we use, I can literally see it now, and I don't know how to describe it, it's outside, so I'm not gonna go grab it. But it's like a big one that goes into a shape of two little ones. I think it's from Kong. We tried that one, we tried a rope one, we tried like a rope and a ball one, we tried just a rope one. He does not care for them. I want him to be using them, he does not want them, he wants a ball. And he wants a proper ball as well because we have the ones where it has the holes in as well. Tried to get him to use that so I felt like it was more safe. No, he wants a tennis ball. So his favorite thing to play fetch with is a big, like big tennis ball. So I'm gonna come on to some advice for owners of two year old dogs. But first up, I wanted to address why we stopped agility because it was this time-ish last year we started, like November, December. And I know some of you were really interested in that and we don't we do not do agility anymore. So I just wanted to quickly talk about it in case you were like, mm, why did that happen? We went to a local one-ish, local-ish. And basically I hated it. I thought this was gonna be so good for Oakley. He loves running about. He was really, really good at it. <laughs> he was really good at it. But I thought it was gonna be way more structured than what it was. I thought the owners would be way more responsible than what they were. And I thought the company would be way more friendly and they just weren't. The company just weren't friendly whatsoever. My first session, no one said hello to me. No one said anything. They were just like, have you done this before? And we we're like, no. And they were like, okay. And then they talked to me with such disdain. Like when I did something wrong, they'd be like, no, don't do that. Like they took it so seriously and I get that, but they didn't talk to me with any kind of kindness whatsoever. <laughs> And Oakley was the best trained dog there, which I wasn't expecting whatsoever. I thought agility, all the dogs are going to be trained. 
uh uh. <laughs> there was even one who was there who the owner was so elderly she couldn't run with the dog so she had this oh god I don't even know what it was not a chihuahua but a chihuahua type size dog and the 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 class teacher had to do the running with the dog because she couldn't do anything so she was basically just bringing this dog for the teacher to do some agility and then not and it wasn't like a full hour of agility it was like you had to wait your turn for each person to have a go on the course and the course would change every week and she the teacher would like go through it at the beginning of the class using terms that i'd never heard before so i never knew what was going on and then the people who went so when you weren't wait when you were waiting for your turn it was like the agility course and then there was a seating section it was small it wasn't like too small but it was small but i had no kind of like gap between him and other dogs so when he wasn't in the in the arena I was training him constantly because other dogs would be trying to sniff him, trying to come up to him. And this lady who was elderly, who had this dog, had no training whatsoever, had no idea about dogs. That dog went for Oakley twice and then she blamed it on me. She was like, if your dog wasn't so energetic, they wouldn't feel threatened. So they wouldn't try and bite, bite him. I was like, <laughs> I'm the only one doing training with my dog when he's not in the arena I'm trying to stop him from barking I'm trying to stop whereas your all of your dogs are just barking like trying to come up to him having no boundaries whatsoever and you're blaming my dog <laughs> also as well if your dog pooped in the arena it was five pound a pop <laughs> five pound for my dog doing a natural thing I get it they've got to clean it but you you get them to poop beforehand then they're running about they're gonna poop one time I got Oakley a poop before we went in and then when he had his go, he pooped twice. That cost me 10 quid. How am I meant to stop my dog from pooping? Like all I can do is get him to poop before the session and I did. And then he's running about really, really fast and really, really excited because he was very vocal when he did it because he's a vocal ass dog. And then that cost me 10 quid. I was like, <laughs> I'm all right, thank you. So I loved the premise of it, but the people just made me be like, nah, I'm all right. <laughs> right, let's get on to advice. I'm gonna try and do it quick and snappy because I realize I've been talking for a really long time. This, all of these pieces of advice are gonna be, what is it? Do as I say, do not as I do. I think that's the phrase, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But this is coming from being like, don't do what I did, do better than me in this last year. So first up, try not to get out of the habit of training. I'm hoping you've been doing training. I hope you've been doing training don't get out of the habit because it's so freaking hard to get back into it. I got out of it because I lost all motivation because it felt like even though I was putting all the work, other dogs were coming up and messing up all my progress. I also just got frustrated because it felt like I'd been doing this for a really long time and wasn't getting a payoff because like I say, cocker spaniels are hard. Don't do what I did. Try and stick into the routine because it's just so hard to get back into it. Try and stick to a routine. Even if you go down, the amount you've been training like say if you've been training morning and night even if you're like if you get sick try and just keep it to like morning or night like keep it to where you feel like you can do it and try not to get out of the routine second piece of advice don't forget to keep taking them to new places we got way too relaxed with that we're like oh well first year we took them to a load of new places we've done loads of socialization and then we got out of it and now he's back to square one because we haven't took him to new places in ages remember like remember to keep taking him to new places even if you don't do anything with them like i wish we'd been doing this where like every two weeks we take him in the car somewhere leave him in like put the boot open leave him in the boot sit with him just so we can see a new place maybe get out to sniff it and then we go and that's it i think i was ex like i was building it up in my head that it was like right every new place you've got to get him out of the car let him have a sniff do some training you'll be crap because you've not been there before but just keep pushing through it and then that for me I was like I can't do that today I can't I can't like my my brain can't deal with that so then we just stopped doing it don't stop you'll thank yourself in the long term put a reminder on your phone or something just keep going to loads of new places with loads of new smells and loads of new people right controversial and this isn't like a I have experience in this but this is just a reminder because I feel like when your dog hits two you're gonna start thinking about maybe getting another dog and everybody starts going, oh, so would you have another one? And everyone's like, oh, so you're gonna, you're gonna get another one? And then when you have good moments with them, you're like, oh, should we get them a friend? Don't do it. And I'm saying this to remind me, as much as you, don't get a second dog when you have issues with your first. <laughs> In the good moments, I'm like, oh, oh, I could get another one. And then we could get a better breed that I wouldn't have as many problems with. And then, maybe it'll help Oakley. 
it wouldn't. I know it wouldn't. In the, in the bad moments, I'm like, oh God, imagine if I had to deal with two right now and maybe like the second one's worse. Like what if the second one becomes aggressive? And then I've got an anxious dog, an aggressive dog. Oh, nah. <laughs> it's the same kind of advice I gave, I think in the first update where it's like, don't get a dog if you don't think you can deal with a problem dog. I'm trying to remind myself of that. Don't get a second dog if you can't deal with a second problem dog. Like, uh, no. Fair enough if you've got an angel dog. <laughs> Even then I'd say, have a long hard think about it. But I see so many people being like, get your dog a dog, it'll help. It'll help with problems. I don't think it will. I think if anything, they just feed off each other. If he starts howling, the other one's gonna start howling, isn't it? They're, the second one's gonna learn off the first one's bad behaviours. So it's just a reminder to you and to me, don't do it. Last one, get help if you need it and don't feel shame around it. There's been so many times where I've been like, no, I can do this myself. I've done so much research on training. I've done so much freaking research. But really, I should just be getting help and getting somebody else to help me with it. I'm not a dog trainer. I'm not a behaviourist. I've not done that training that they have. And sometimes no amount of research will help with your patience with the dog. And that's where mine follows. I know what I need to be doing, but sometimes I just don't have the patience for it. And I know that's on me and I know I need to have it. But I think if I had the accountability of a behaviorist being like, this is gonna work, I'd probably have more patience. But currently it's just me being like, I think this is gonna help. And then if it doesn't, I'm like, ah. Whereas if I have a behaviorist and they're like, I think this is gonna help and then it doesn't work, they're gonna be like, okay, let's try this. Whereas instead of me just being like, <laughs> And the behaviours that we will use eventually, she had on her website being like, the longer the problems go on, the more you're gonna resent your dog. And I think that's so true. I have resented Oakley at points and I do not want that. Like who wants that? Who wants to resent their dog? So if you can get a behaviourist as soon as you possibly can and save yourself any resentment for your dog, do it, get some help. Obviously money is a thing, but I'm meaning if you have it. That is gonna be it. But really quickly before you click off the video, I think I'm feeling a bit more comfortable with doing more Oakley videos. The only reason I didn't want to do this one is because like he was doing so well and then I was like, oh, I'm going to have to come on and do the update video and being like, oh, he's gone crap again. When actually for the majority of this year, he's been really, really good. But I'm becoming more comfortable about doing more videos with him because like I say, I got a lot of hate at the beginning and that's why I stopped posting them as much. So if you have videos that you want to see from me with Oakley, please let me know because currently I have zero ideas of what people want to see with dogs. So please comment and let me know if there's any videos you want to see. I also have a Google form in my description box where you can leave a comment anonymously. So leave it there, wherever you feel comfortable. That is going to be it for this video. I'm going to leave the link to the video update from last year if you want to watch that after this. And if you could like, comment, subscribe and share, that would be great. It helps push my YouTube channel to other people and it lets me know what you're enjoying. But even if you don't do any of those things, thank you so much for watching and I shall hopefully see you in another video. Do you want to say goodbye? Should we use your noggin to do the bye should we ready ready bye